broken logs here. I've got a uh, loose rock, loose rock falling already. And I'm gonna just ease myself out and I'm gonna just work my way over the edge. You don't need to do any crazy, crazy repelling unless you want to. This week I want to talk about expedient repelling. Now, right up front, safety disclaimer. Uh, don't just learn how to repel from a uh, YouTube video. Go take a real class, real training on how to propel from professionals. Right? All, all this video is for is to stimulate your mind, get you pointed in the right direction. Right? So when you start looking at expedient repelling, it's just like when I teach medical classes. I want you to know what correct looks like first. For example, what does a correct tourniquet look like? And then when you find yourself in a situation when you need one and you don't have it, you know what correct looks like and then you can, oh, I need a windlass, I need something two inches wide, and you can then build it from there. To do expedient repelling, you've got to know what correct looks like. You've got to have a anchor point. I have a hundred year old tree that's not going anywhere. I'm using a dynamic rope. You've got to have a rope. Uh, static ropes have less stretch in them. Helmet, gloves. And uh, again, I have a Petzl uh, rappel seat and a locking carabiner and a D-ring. I have all the proper equipment. Now, you notice we are not rappelling off of a pretty rappel tower. That's not real life. I want you guys to understand real life. Uh, at the top of a cliff, nine times out of 10, you've got a nice gentle rolling hill that gets steeper and steeper and steeper. So you may think you may not need to repel. You'll get all the way down this thing and then all of a sudden you'll get to the cliff face where the camera is right now. Got a nice 50 foot drop right there. No big deal. We'll repel down. All right, so um, all I'm gonna do to lock in because I'm using a figure eight, I'm gonna take a bite on the rope. I'm gonna run it through once and because I'm lazy, and fat, I'm gonna run it through a second time. That just gives more friction, more resistance on it. I'm gonna snap link in, lock my carabiner, brake hand, hand in the small of my back, guide hand uphill, piece of cake. That's what correct repelling looks like. We're out here, we're actually at the cliff over where we did Operation Valkyrie. You know, the number one mistake that people make when they go repelling uh, in, uh, in wooded areas, uh, not on a tower, is they use a rope that's too short. When you throw your rope over the top of the cliff, down the side, make sure it touches the bottom, okay? If you don't have enough rope, go find somewhere shorter to go down. All right, our rope, we have plenty of rope on this here. It's only a little over 50 foot, maybe a little bit more. I can see the rope laying on the ground. We're good to go. So work yourself up to the edge. Now I've got uh, broken logs here. I've got uh, loose rock, loose rock falling already. And I'm gonna just ease myself out. And I'm gonna just work my way over the edge. You don't need to do any crazy, crazy repelling, unless you want to. All right, so you need to repel. You don't have all the gear to do it correct. Replace one step at a time. Um, I'm using the same tree for an anchor point. I had that anchor point here, but you notice I'm not locking my rope in. And instead of using a rope, I'm using my, uh, my spectral line, my am steel. This is actually blue am steel. It's the same stuff that's on the winch on the front of my Jeep, except this is three millimeter, all right? It's rated for 2,200 pounds. It's strong stuff, strong stuff. I have it doubled up. Now you notice I have it going around the tree and right here I have my midway mark so that I know half the rope is on either side. And then all I did was I threw both ends over the side of the cliff. 
make sure that they touch the bottom. Now, the next thing you need when you're rappelling is you need a rappel seat. If you don't have a rappel seat, you can take the end of that same rope and make a loop at the other end. Uh, twice your height is uh, the correct length for if you have a lot of winter clothing on, uh, I'm just rappelling in a t-shirt and pants. So it's about a foot shorter than that. All right, so tied my knot. And when you cinch around, now understand this is not a comfortable purpose-built rappel seat. It digs in. Be careful you get your junk out of the way or it'll be just like uh, that first parachute uh, jump you had with one ball under the strap. Uh, it sucks. All right, lock, locking carabiner. If you don't have that, brother, you'll have to make up something. I don't care if you're using uh, the hooks off of the shower curtain in the hotel room. Take all 10 of those hooks, have them all laced opposite directions, and you can use that as a carabiner. Be creative, solve the problem. All right, and then I love using a figure eight. Now, figure eight, you're gonna run your bite through so that you have both on it, and then you're gonna snap link it in. In, lock my carabiner down, and same thing, you're going to Use your brake hand, guide hand, and guide yourself over the side of the cliff. On rappel, we're going to ease our way up over the side here. Hi, mom. All right, so 50 foot, no big deal. Now, all you do is you undo it. I'll show you real quick. Undo your line. You're gonna undo your harness here. Now the cool part is all I have to do is pull on my rope and what it's going to do is it's going to self recover. Pull on it. I can undo my loop at the other end, roll it back up, and gents, we're ready to take off again for the next leg of our journey. All right, so guys, you see, it's not about having nothing and just sucking your thumb and saying that I can't do this. It's about break down the problem, right? Uh, Know what you need to do things correctly, including repelling, right? And then uh, if you don't have a good anchor point, find a good anchor point. Have something you, you can repel with. Can you repel with 550 cord? No, not really, guys. You, uh, yes, it's rated for uh, 550 pounds, but the reality is, is it's got seven separate strands inside of it. And if you start and one of those strand, uh, strands break, <clears throat> you're not going to know because it, it's inside of a sheath. Once you start bounding dynamic, dynamic movements, uh, you're putting way more stress on that rope. It works with this stuff here. Uh, there are larger lines. Three millimeters is just what I choose to carry myself uh, personally. But so anyways, that's about it for expedient repelling. What else could you use? Uh, brother, I don't care if you're... Uh, braiding together tore up uh, bed sheets that's another class right but again this is just to open your mind if you're interested in doing repelling i'm serious go get a legitimate class with professional instructors it is fun to do it's a great skill to have in your toolbox so anyways that's all we have this week um, y'all take care shoot straight
If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.